Hey guys, David here from TechOp.io, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to run Tails OS in VirtualBox. Now VirtualBox is one of the best options for running Tails OS in a virtual machine, since it's also open source, which aligns with the privacy-oriented philosophy of Tails. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to download and run Tails OS in VirtualBox step by step. This virtual machine will be configured to save absolutely nothing inside once it is powered off. Now, just a disclaimer, the interesting thing is that on the Tails OS website, you can actually see that they don't recommend VirtualBox anymore because of a supposed bug where the screen resolution gets stuck at 800 by 600. But I think this may be outdated advice since I haven't had a problem with screen resolution in my experience, and there are a lot of options for different sizes in the Tails OS display settings. All that being said, let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is visit the Tails OS website at tails.net. And you'll want to click Install Tails at the top here. And you'll actually want to scroll all the way down to the bottom under the Other Options section, and you'll want to click Burning a Tails DVD. Now, you might be asking, why a DVD? Well, we're not actually going to burn this to a DVD, but this is where we can download the ISO image for Tails OS that VirtualBox uses to boot. So I'll click Download ISO image here, and it'll start downloading. I'll just give it a few minutes, and also you'll want to move this somewhere you won't delete it afterwards, since the virtual machine will need the ISO to boot every time. Okay, and once the ISO is downloaded, we can open VirtualBox and create our new virtual machine for Tails. So I'm going to click New at the top here, and I'll give the virtual machine a name. I'm just going to type in Tails OS. Next, you'll want to click the arrow beside ISO image, and you'll want to click Other. And you'll want to select the ISO file that you just downloaded and click Open. And once you've done that, if it hasn't automatically set the type to Linux, subtype to Debian, and version to Debian 64-bit, you should set these values manually. Tails OS is derived from Debian, so this is the closest option since there isn't a Tails OS option. Now this is really important to check here, skip unattended installation. Unattended installation may be desirable on regular Debian for some users, but for Tails OS it would defeat the purpose and override the secure built-in user account. And honestly, I'm not even sure that it would work properly, so just make sure that this box is checked. Next, you'll want to go to Hardware, and you can increase the amount of memory and processors. The Tails OS minimum requirements say it requires a minimum of 2048 megabytes of RAM, or 2 gigabytes, and one CPU core. I'm going to bump this up to 4096 megabytes, or 4 gigabytes, and two CPU cores just for a slightly smoother experience. Next, I'll go to Hard Disk, and I'll actually select Do Not Add a Virtual Hard Disk. This setup ensures it's physically impossible to save anything inside the Tails OS virtual machine. As I stated in the beginning, when you power off the virtual machine, everything inside will automatically get erased. Once you're happy with your settings, click Finish. And now we can see our new Tails OS virtual machine here, so with it selected, I'll just click Start. And we can see that we're booting Tails OS. I'll just hit Enter on the keyboard. And I'll just give it a minute to load so we can get to the welcome screen. Now once you're at the welcome screen, you can change your language and keyboard settings if you like. I'm just going to leave them on the default and click Start Tails. And on the next screen, Tails will ask how you want to connect to the Tor network. If you're not sure, I suggest just clicking Connect to Tor automatically and clicking Connect to Tor down here. Give it a second to connect to the Tor network. And that's it, we can launch the Tor browser. And with Tor open, we can browse the internet anonymously, and we can be sure that our session is fully private and secure, and that anything we do in the virtual machine will be destroyed as soon as we power it off. Also, just to note for those familiar with VirtualBox already, normally you'd want to install VirtualBox Guest Editions inside your virtual machine. I actually recommend to not install VirtualBox Guest Editions in this case, since it exposes more features from your host system to the virtual machine, which goes against the secure philosophy of Tails and has the potential to make your session less private. It also runs perfectly fine without guest editions installed, and even if you did install it, it would be wiped as soon as you shut down the virtual machine anyways. Also, just to show, different screen resolutions do seem to work correctly now in VirtualBox. So if I open up display settings, we can see that under the resolution menu, we have quite a few options. So if I just test out one or two here and I'll click apply, so yeah, the screen resolution isn't stuck at 800 by 600 like the Tails OS website says. I think that is outdated information on the Tails website. So other than that, VirtualBox is a great option to run Tails OS in an open source virtual machine and is much easier to set up than some of the other alternatives suggested, such as KVM. You'll probably want to stay away from anything proprietary, such as VMware for running Tails, 
since it's not open source and there could potentially be an unknown backdoor in VMware, which could make your tail session less secure. All of this is in theory, of course. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out my website at techop.io for more.